shot down. By early 1944, our losses were again nearly one in 20 bombers each month. The night fighters were again gaining the upper hand. One of the most successful was Major Prince Heinrich Wittgenstein, who shot down 84 bombers, four in a single night, before he too was shot down. Then an American daylight fighter caught a strange Ju-88, and a frame from the camera gun film revealed a mysterious cluster of aerials on the nose. Then came an incredible stroke of luck. A second Ju-88, fitted with the same aerials, landed at a British airfield by mistake. It contained an unknown radar, SN2, and a new receiving device codenamed Flensburg. When test flown at Farnborough, it was discovered that SN2 was immune to our window because it operated on a longer wavelength. But worse still, Flensburg could be used to home onto our bombers using the transmissions from Monica. Uh, they found we got range, they'd got ranges of 100 miles or more. So that the night fighters themselves now didn't have to depend even on the ground spotting uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, our bombers. Uh, they could actually fly uh, and just get into the general area of the, uh, of, of, of the stream. And in fact, could home right down to very close ranges indeed. Monica was immediately removed from the bombers and SN2 was soon countered by a new window cut to that radar's wavelength. From now on, the German night fighters could only attack visually on bright nights, which of course helped our gunners too. And as our radar-equipped Mosquito night fighters were now flying with the bombers, the hunters became the hunted. And a grim dialogue between radar operator and pilot followed as they stalked the German fighters. Two o'clock, 15 all the time, steady. Range coming down to about uh, 800 feet. We were taking about five miles an hour. Hot boss one, 15. One o'clock, 15. Range about 600. Throttle back a little, just almost synchronized speed. OK, one I can see 15. him, keep going. Right, one o'clock, 15. Range about 500. Still overtaking very slowly. OK, I'll hold him now. Have a look with the glasses. Right. It's a twin engine. I can't see any exhausts. OK, I've got the glasses. Where is he? Right above there, about 50 degrees at 1 o'clock. You see him? We're right below him. Yes, there. I see him. Yes, hold on. Single fin. It's 88. Definitely. OK, that's what I thought it was. I will drop back. Right. Range is going out to about 450 again. OK. Well, this ought to shake him. pendulum had swung back again, and RAF bombers paused in the night attack on Germany to prepare for the coming invasion, D-Day. They could now fly by day. Such was the superiority that the Allied Air Forces enjoyed during the summer of 1944. This is what the Luftwaffe had been unable to achieve during the Battle of Britain, partly as a result of underestimating our radar. We did not make that mistake. The night attack on Germany would resume, and the Germans, who had by now captured a magnetron, had also developed 10 centimetre radar. But by then, all they could detect was defeat. And when that defeat came, the superbly engineered Würzburgs that had not been destroyed were collected, refurbished and given to universities. One of them discovered the hydrogen line on 21 centimetres, helping to found the new science of radio astronomy, which has since discovered pulsars and quasars and black holes and has reached to the very limits of the galaxy.